Can you remember the uh, the first attempt a guy made to try to kiss you? Don't even, don't say oh god like that. No, I'm trying to. I mean, it's so long ago. It's it, whatever it was, whoever it was, it was not consequential i mean it's not like oh i remember it was tommy i was in fourth grade i have no idea it was that bad no, Can no. it, just, it was inconsequential whatever it was yeah. okay all right now don't worry i don't remember what i did yesterday so we're fine <laughs> <laughs> so most of most of the men that you have been able to to make melt before you <laughs> Uh, they, a grandized version of me. This is beautiful. They, they, and listen, you ha, you don't know the comments I get from guys about you. That's why you don't know. Okay. You, you've got a fan crush uh, from from my viewers. That that's amazing. They, wow, the, that's these guys are willing to give up. They want to give up their homes and credit cards and wow. they wow. want <laughs> You gotta have it. You gotta have that Susan back. Can you on. Help really... for me. Well, not told me till now. Well, I'm just, I didn't you? want you to think that there was a bunch of stalkers, you know, watching the show. But there are a bunch of stalkers watching the show. They they uh, they find you extremely, uh, exceptionally beautiful and intelligent. So I just uh, tell you that. Okay. So when it when it comes to somebody making a move, a guy should keep in mind what two or three things if he's going to make this move to show a woman that he's for real. That it's he's not just a he's not a player that he is truly interested in her. What are some of the things that he needs to do to show that he's for real from a woman's standpoint for a kiss? Or is this just separate and apart from a kiss? Separate apart from a kiss. Oh, listen, figure out who she is. If you if you can't figure out who she is and what's important to her and what she stands for and what she loves, don't even bother. Uh, so she's got to feel that you've connected with her. Women, women are very much attracted to people that they, they always talk about the connection. Oh my God, I felt okay. the connection. It's connection. It's, and for guys, it's chemistry. For women, we use the word connection. So he's attentive. He's interested. He's listening to her. He's engaging. He's warm. And she feels safe. Safe but excited. It's that kind of like safe but excited. Yeah, not not the best friend kind of safe. Like oh, I it, <laughs> it it's kind of it's not not that I'm going to the store with you safe, but but the kind in which she doesn't mind being close to the edge of a cliff because she knows you're there. Oh, well, that's the ultimate. Come on, kind of. Kind of the, the, I, didn't know, yeah. I didn't know that was the ultimate. I just popped. Well, in the but I mean. For us to lean back and know the man's got it, that's brilliant. Okay. You know. Yeah. Now, if a guy becomes lazy, like you mentioned earlier, if a guy becomes lazy, what are the options that are in front of a woman that a man needs to know for him to get his act together? He becomes lazy. What is something that you would tell a woman to start doing if he becomes lazy? Um, let's say she wants to communicate directly. I, I have a formula that I think is easily absorbable. Um, I first, in a very neutral way, would say to the person, it, this, it, this goes for any issue in the relationship. Um, look, uh, this is happening. Uh, and she describes, I think, I feel like you're losing interest in the relationship or you're not showing me. They'll go, no, 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 I love you, babe. Say, no, hear me out. Um, so I feel like you've gotten lazy. We're, you know, we're not having sex anymore. You know, you're not taking me out. I come home. You're kind of on your phone. So it makes me feel dismissed and not important and not like a priority. And what I'd like to experience is more interactivity. I'd really like if you put the phone away at dinner. I'd really like us to be expressive uh, physically. I'd like blah, blah, blah. Is that something you think that you can do or that you want to do? And then you wait for them to say it. But it just feels to me that if you have to hide a part of secrets. your life. Secrets is what you're, you're highlighting. Yeah. If you have to hide a part of your life to be okay with your partner, sort of like if they ever knew that I did this or that. Right, 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 right. Then, now that's then, a problem. 
then you're never going to feel loved in that relationship. And then it's a charade and then you're playing games and then you're just it. making it look good for everybody else. So it's not going to really be satisfying. Right. So when it comes to having a charade and having this fake relationship um, and someone is holding back, let's say it's me, I'm holding back from you. You're not going to feel safe you're not going to know who you're really dealing with because I've got this part of me that I'm not really sharing with you. And that I'll, could be a gambling, that could be gambling. As you yeah, said, it could yeah. be any addiction. And of course, someone who's an addiction specialist and goes in that area could, could work with a couple, but we're talking about now, there's no way real love can, can flourish. It's hard because when you have an addiction, it gets in the way. Remember the thing that addict loves is their, their thing. They're whatever they're, it's the gambling or it's the porn or it's the spending or it's the booze. They love that more than they love their partner. That's their number one because they don't want to give it up. And so the, the partner's you know, not number one anymore. No, can't be. But the partner will always be compromised for the addiction because the addiction comes first. Scratching that itch comes first. When, when real love is in effect in a relationship, how can a woman know if she's experiencing real love? That again is evolutionary for each woman, each person. Um, I knew a lady who had been married 30 years. Wow. And just recently after her divorce said, a man she was dating said, He's so nice to me. He he asked wow. me if I'm cold, if I want a glass of water. Wow. Like she never heard of this before. Susan, are you telling me she went 30 years with a, with a guy and he didn't even ask her difficult. if she was cold or can I get you very a, difficult. a blanket? I knew it. Oh, he was very difficult. Now, that first feeling of being taken care of was yeah. her first aha moment. Like, oh, there is more. A man will do more for you because in her upbringing, from mm -hmm. her family life to her marriage, she didn't expect any attention to her because it had, she'd never received it. So it goes back to the first question that you had, how to create love when you've never seen it and how you understand being loved is evolutionary. Mm -hmm. So we'll take somebody that never knew what it was and knew it its opposite, who then came to the point where after dating a number of people said, I don't go out with anybody that doesn't make me number one. They treat me like a queen and that's what I expect. And that's, and that's, that's a she, good thing though, right? That's a yeah, good thing. That's what she, now that may be a little bit of her flashing to me because she's very humble and she's very grounded and very loving. She's exceedingly loving. Okay. Uh, always the caretaker now has kind of found her own power and it's like no nah, no nah, i want my yeah, that's good yeah. i'm going to be loving i'm going to treat yeah. you great you will be well compensated but you got to take care of me as well because okay. now it's her turn okay. right? right and uh, so that's how the pendulum swings and sometimes in the beginning you know so there's there's that part that we do there's the part that we can only attract in the level that we can accept okay. we've either seen it or we imagine we deserve it and we could have somebody really loving and it doesn't quite register for us we know they're good but we don't get it and then you start to learn how to accept the love and learn how to be in that dynamic okay. and then the love gets stronger and then each relationship that you have either the relationship that you're in can grow stronger or each uh, subsequent relationship gets more meaningful and more profound because your ability to give and receive love has increased through your experience. And that's why I think that there are all these relationships that we go through, all these trials and errors actually have an upside if we can use that perspective to see it is that, you know, not everything is a brutal lesson like, oh God, it's a lesson. Life is a lesson. It's going one rotten relationship after the next. You know, life is not a full-time classroom. I mean, how boring is that? Okay, to be lazy once in a blue and be human. It's not a song and dance all the time. But when you want something, that seems to be what she's focusing on. 
that she's understanding. She'll be understandable to someone if, you know, they're going to be human. They're going to be tired. They're going to be lazy, but not all the time. Good philosophy. So there, there's an interesting point here. and I've done some videos on uh, settling, uh, you know, like when do we settle and is it settling? And I've, again, the individual factors make all the difference in the world. So these are blanket statements. But if you're settling on keeping somebody because you fear being alone and you're like, oh my God, it's so much work and I'm not happy. It's not great, but I don't know. And I don't want to do it. Then you're lazy. <laughs> then you get what you get. Okay. Right? I, I love you, Susan. Yeah, I love the way you said That sounds like something I would hear my dad say, you're lazy. And then you're lazy, right? Um, <laughs> right? And then there are some times when I have realized that I have known people who have settled and it's actually been an accurate decision given okay. what was available. Meaning my goal was here, but I got this. Now this is in my hand and this person wants me. I may have wanted them to be this, this, and this, but I've been out here looking for a long time and I haven't seen it. And you know, my clock is ticking and I want to get married and have a family. Yeah. And it's not, as Chris Rock says, not your first I'm choice, not your first. <laughs> but it might be your only choice. <laughs> yeah. So you take it because right. overall you've got more than, than, than nothing. And you, and you take it and you invest in it. And right. that's, that, that is a workable relationship. Okay. If both people continue to invest in it and make it rich in other ways. So that they're able to grow together. They're able to do yeah. something together. They're right. able to, they, their primary focus was to have a partner for fill in the blank, to create a family, to have safety and security, to have economic mobility. This is my business partner, my life mate. We get along well for, you know, whatever, um, my best friend, my sexy best friend. So, you know, that they have found a functional way that if they team up, they're going to be uh, better than if they're working on their own. And they've decided that they're going to do it. Okay, that they seems to be... A 10, she yeah. may be six and a half. She may have wanted that he be six foot one and he's five eight, but it works. So settling means I, in that case, I made a conscious choice, a proactive choice to choose this person that... I may have wanted them to have a couple more bells and whistles, but overall, this is pretty good. So this is like standing at the gaming table and go, okay, I'm up by, you know, 90,000. Do I roll or do I just like hold? Because I got 90 in my hands right now. That's a pretty good thing, right? It's a sure thing. It's a sure yeah. thing, right? Some people take the sure thing at fifty dollars. It just depends on your risk <laughs> tolerance, right? Depends on your risk tolerance. But you're yeah. you're talking about teaming up together is not necessarily settling because now you're able to work together and grow together. If there's another goal that you have that you're both passionate about, yeah, it, yeah. then it really adds a lot to the relationship. If there's a greater goal that both of you are shooting for, then who so. who cares if he's five eight? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who cares if uh, you said six and a half or seven? And sometimes our perfect partner comes in a package that we did not anticipate. Wow. Okay. That's a really good point. Uh, she's got something on the screen for you there. You show it. You give uh, beautiful energy. You know the difference, the enthusiasm, the ups and downs, but you work through it and you want it. Uh, right. and that's similar to what you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, Emmy also says, I am transparent, honest, and very real. Uh, she mentions here, he met me with crazy hair, no makeup, <laughs> no makeup and oh, unshaved wow. legs. Laugh out oh, loud. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, you're very transparent now. Uh, I don't put, <laughs> I don't put on a show for no one. I shaved after and did my hair on the first true date with the happy face she gives there. So I'm quite sure that got his attention. <laughs> uh, he got to meet you in, in both stages. This is a fallacy that now women will know what I'm talking about here. Your ugliest state, you got dirty hair and a baseball cap on and a t-shirt and you ran out to get a quart of milk. And you know, you guys, you know, guys love that. like that, right? You know, guys right? like that. Okay. Well, they like it because it looks accessible. You know, it looks like, oh. they it, right. Okay. Okay. Right? I, I mean, if she were all dolled up and like <laughs> just knock at, they'd be good. They'd get good. it. They didn't go uh, like that, but they look okay. at this. 
they think the girl next door, they think, oh, I can do this. Maybe she won't reject me. She looks like a crack today, so maybe she won't reject me. You're good. You're really good. I know a few locker rooms, if you went there, a lot of guys would totally be laughing because you're telling the truth. And ladies, that's true. That is true. He's got a shot. Wait, he's got a shot. You're right. He would be thinking. No, guys do think like that, ladies. He's thinking, oh, I got a shot. But if you got dressed up, yeah, he's in trouble. He might be intimidated and afraid to talk. But the guys who would talk to you with no fear, those are the players. They come right up to you because that's a challenge for them. So they're looking for a conquest and uh, a notch in their belt. Turn them down. They're more excited with the fact that they took the challenge to come up to you because now you're wow. a them, don't you think? Okay. Players, no, players. that's no, no, that's true. That's true. Guys that are like that, they just you know, I want to say beaming with confidence, and that's not yeah. the case. They're just cocky more than anything else and, and arrogant, and they could care less if you told them no, because exactly. they feel they'll feel they got 20, 30 others that they'll go to and you just weren't good enough. That's right. That's but right. a guy who sees you and he literally is interested in you. He's going to, yeah, if he sees you in, in, in dirty hair, would you say baseball cap and dirty hair? He's going to yeah. sit there and go like, hey, you know what? We're just, I'm just having a conversation with you. He's not trying to have a conquest. Uh, according to Emmy, that's what happened to her. She, he felt confident enough to approach her, I guess, uh, because she didn't look overwhelmingly uh, intimidating. Okay, now I need to ask you this uh, before uh, I am not going to take your entire day. Uh, but I do want to ask you about these things that I have to cover before we end the stream today. When a woman wants a man, what are the three subjects that she or questions that she's probably going to bring up to find out what his mind is, is on and what he thinks about what three things is it? I mean, I'm just going to throw these out to you. Is it children? Is it money? Uh, is it sex? Uh, is it in-laws? W- what are the subjects that most women find common themes that they want to know about that they will go back and talk with their friends about? Well, Who's they want to know if he wants a commitment. If they okay. want a relationship with a guy, they want to know, is he ready to commit? They probably want to know if, they, if they're young gals, does he want a family? Um, and then they're going to want to know a little bit about his personal history. Like maybe what happened with his last relationship. Um, but basically, it's pretty much, do you want what I want? That's the number one thing. When a man doesn't answer directly, and he seems to be beating around the bush and not being transparent, what's your advice? I actually had that experience the other day, socially and with a, not a not a romantic thing. Okay. I find it right. so irritating. Um, he's scared. He's really scared. If he gives no answer that's concrete, he's made no mistakes. But he's an idiot. I mean, that's the way. How else you can look at it? Because he doesn't take a stand, and he doesn't trust himself, and and he's probably going to neg you, and meaning you know find something wrong with you in a very kind of. I never said that thing, but yeah, it's just, they're very insecure. And I think that a man that doesn't give you a direct answer should really be a huge red flag where you think, hmm, I'm pretty forthcoming. I know what I want. Why is it so difficult for this man to be straight with me? Because if he can't be straight with me now, I bet he's never going to be straight with me because this is his default when he's nervous or scared. Yeah not being transparent really shows exactly. that he's he's insecure nervous or scared and he's not interested in really speaking the truth to you exactly uh, emmy just wanted to say oh no he was persistent talking about the man in her life uh two months persistent before i said yes to a cup of coffee he broke is that, is that normal sledgehammer just hammering away at that wall i mean he was just little by little bit just banging that wall to get it to come down is that is that is that a sign that he really wants her, her or in that situation I or he, he just what do you think? It depends on it's a, it's a question of longevity. Like okay. does he do it for a week or two and give up, or does he like this is it, and he just keeps after that wall trying to bring it down. Persist- easier, easier to find a man interested in commitment between the ages of twenty and thirty, or between. 
30 and 50? I'd your, say 28 to 37 because they're starting to have kids. 20s, early 20s, forget it. I mean, maybe North Dakota, Alaska, you got some guys that want to, you know, they've gone through the three women in town and you're number four, so you're you're lucky. <laughs> How do you come up with this stuff? Sorry. You're going to the three. <laughs> My head. That that I could see that in a coffee shop, a bunch of guys are looking at a younger guy going like, "Man, okay, there's nobody else left." Okay, you're gonna need. Right. I mean, like, <laughs> so easy when towns were small, there were like three or four girls that eligible that were single. I mean, you ha- didn't have such a big selection, so you didn't have this paradox of choice. But so I think young men are busy trying to make their career, and they have to feel like they have a foothold. Men are very interesting as far as commitment. Many times I think women fail to understand that a man is a good guy, is not committing to them, not because he doesn't love them, but he doesn't feel ready. And when she hears ready, right? That's She's true. thinking he doesn't love her enough. And Paxton, bear me out on this. I think he doesn't feel like he's stable enough in his career. Is that it has correct? nothing to do with her. It has nothing exactly. to do with her. You and, know what? And, and because he has not been either taught by a dad or somebody, some male, you got to tell her that you can't, you can't just say, I'm not ready. And then and say, Oh, by the way, let's just be friends. Like till I'm ready is what he's really saying. And and she's looking at you going like, you just told me you're not ready. How are we going to be friends? You go like, I don't see what the problem is. It's like two different languages, but it's the same conversation. Right. If, he, if he expresses himself the right way, it's clear. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm uh, you're it for me but I need to get some things in place so that I feel I'm providing for you better because I, I want you to have the best. If she turns right around and go like, okay, that's really stupid. We could do that together. Oh, he's going like, Oh, okay. Well, let's just get married. then. (laughs) But if he doesn't express it, she's in the dark. That's just me. That's just. So, and it's a funny thing because I think centuries have been a hangover of men having to provide and take care of a woman. The woman they're dating may make more money than they do. Yeah. And they have greater upward mobility than they do. But in their head, they've been taught, I'm responsible. And they also think, and if you want to get pregnant and stay at home, I got to take care of it. So a man yeah. might be reticent to do this before he's financially secure. So generally speaking, late 20s, early 30s, a guy has gotten his foothold in his career. And he kind of knows the trajectory of what he can expect. And at that point, he and his buddies will see others getting married and then eventually he'll get on board. When the last question I needed to get here, this is something that you've made a video about. And uh, I encourage a few people to go, just go look at the video on your YouTube channel. Um, but here I asked the question, empath versus narcissist. How to tell the difference between an empath that you're dealing with And when you're dealing with a narcissist, this has been covered numerous times, but you have a great video that's out on it, but just feel free to touch on that. How can a woman tell that she's dealing with a a man that's an empath and when she's dealing with a man that is indeed either covert or malignant a narcissist? It's a very sophisticated question because they're both going to be keyed into how you feel. It depends on what they do with it. Like an empath will say absorb your feelings i think Mm -hmm. and 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 feel them as their own feelings they'll be affected by your feelings a narcissist will read your feelings for data for what they can do to you but they're going to be unaffected by it what i was gonna say (laughs) i was really looking forward to trying to have this as smoothly as possible and and get this going i i I am honored to do this with you you mean more to me and my daughter's Thank then you. you you will probably ever find out and come to understand. Uh, and I hope to be able to express that to you because um, you, you doing this uh, with the changes and a number of things that took place uh, on the fly, I truly appreciate it. I am indebted to you. You ever need anything, you ever need any type of anything, please uh, reach out to me. I know I'm on the bottom of the totem pole, but at least uh, reach out to me. I truly appreciate it. I Hey, my daughters, if you need anything, I'm telling you, they, they were running in and out of this. You can't see it. You you can't see what has been happening to try to make this 
to get their old man to be the face of this and the stuff behind the scene, uh, scenes and uh, the stuff with software, all this other stuff that they do and we've been doing. Uh, I am honored that we were able to at least do this. Thank you for being patient with us, oh, all three of us. This is wonderful, Paxton. You know, we make a good team, but I would like to encourage your daughters to show up once in a while. Um, yeah, you know what? In the scenes, but I'd love to see their faces and see who they are. So Yeah, all you heard was voice. All you heard was voice, by the way. So, um... All right. Hey, listen, <laughs> this is a Fire. They're talking. You can't hear them because my mic can't pick it up. But they're they're talking over there. They're saying stuff to you. But we'll we'll talk another time where they actually will have their Absolutely. have their have their no baseball cap or hair done and all that okay. stuff. Okay. They were like, "Oh no, we're not we're not ready," okay. is what they were saying. But, but you know, hey, uh, so they are. I just want to in in their behalf. I just want you to know. Uh, thank you for getting this first uh, oh, broadcast up excellent. for us. Great. Uh, we are looking to to hit here as we did other places. But everyone, please make sure that you take the time uh, to go to Susan E. Winter uh, at Susan E. Winter on Instagram. Uh, please make sure that you like, comment, share, and subscribe to her YouTube page. Uh, you will find uh, as uh, you come to this Narc Abuse TV network, we showcase a lot of people. And I love each and every one of the individuals who have been on our show on Instagram. But Susan is really special to us, and she oh. has no idea how much she's special to us. Thank but if it you. wasn't for Susan, people would not even know who Instagram, uh, Narc Abuse TV is on Instagram, because it changed right after we had her on the show. Yay. And uh, I am indebted to you, uh, because we've been able to uh, get a lot of people on who have helped a lot of people, and it's because of you, Susan. Uh, oh, you seem to sew cool. everything together. Uh, and thank you for being patient today. Oh, you had very good energy. I liked you the first time I worked. Yeah. Thank well, you so much. Anytime, hey, anytime you need anything, your podcast, okay. anything, I'm telling you, we, we're well, there you for you. Streamyard. <laughs> we, we, okay, well, hey, we'll be happy to set. We'll be happy to set the whole thing up for you. Trust me, we'll be happy to do that. Thank, thank you, you Susan. Everyone. Love you much. Thanks. Take care. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank Bye. You. Thank you.